السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم um, uh, Last time we started to talk about base net um, and we um, uh, this we um, uh, we covered the basic concept of base net which is conditional independence and we saw that base net is a uh, called also graphical model it has uh, nodes and edges the nodes represent variables edges represent uh, local interaction uh, between variables and under each node in the network there is a conditional probability table CPT that models the conditional probability of the uh, variable given its parents okay any questions about the last lecture about the concept of a base net well, of course we'll continue talking about it to give uh, another example last time we, we went through a simple example uh, we will have another example today and then inshallah we'll talk about uh, inference okay let's start with this example we have uh, a base net of five variables here this is the classical one that has burglary uh, uh, earthquake alarm john and mary calling okay uh, you don't see the slides okay just one second Okay, you see you see the slides I think now okay uh, so we have this uh, classical network the burglary the earthquake the alarm join and my calling and we have for each node of course it's CPT and then we said that uh, last time uh, given the base net we can compute any joint probability any joint probability at least for now, a full assignment of joint probability, which means joint probability that has all the variables. So for example, if I want to compute this probability, probability of plus B minus E plus A minus J plus M, I can compute that using the chain rule, right? But BaseNet makes the formula of chain rule much simpler because it says that this is probability of the multiplication of probabilities of each variable given only its parents, not all the previous variables, only its parents. So this probability will be probability of, uh, if we start from the top, probability of plus b. There is no condition here because there is no parent for, for b. So probability of plus b times probability of minus e because e doesn't have any parents. Then times probability of uh, plus a given its parents given the values of its parents here we have b and e so given plus b and minus e times probability of minus j given the value of its parent which is plus a times probability of uh, plus m the last one given its parents, which is also plus a. Type. Do we have these values in the tables? Yes, of course. Each one here comes from one of these five tables. So this is probability of plus b. Okay. Probability of minus e, we'll see it in that table. That's probability of minus e. Probability of plus a given plus b and minus e. That's from that table, plus b and minus e, that's probability of plus a given plus b and minus e. For minus j and plus uh, given plus a, uh, minus j given plus a, so you'll see it on that table, uh, minus j given plus b plus a, this is the probability. And uh, finally, plus m given uh, plus a, this uh, uh, this one okay so you multiply all of these five values you will get the joint uh, probability okay any questions about this and of course you can do the same for any joint probability that has the full assignment we'll see how we can do it of course for the others but with full assignment we can get any probability 
which means that you can compute the entire table, the entire joint distribution table, which is the main power of BaseNet. So instead of uh, computing the entire table at once, okay, you can compute it on demand using these small tables. You, you don't have to, to keep the entire table. The entire table will have five variables. Here we have two values for each variable. So we have 32, two to the power of five, right? 32 entries in that table. Now we don't have 32 entries. Of course, we have uh, much less than that. Any questions about how we computed this probability? Everything is clear? Okay, so this is how we computed and these are the values uh, that we spotted. Now let's talk about the notion of causality that we talked about last time. Last time we said that for simplicity, we can assume that the links in the, in the, in the net encode causality. So for example, rain causes traffic, right? So we make a, uh, arc from R to T. That, that makes us have a, a, a CPT that indicates probability of T given R. Okay? So this is logical, this is simple, this is intuitive, right? We can, uh, we can encode it that way. We can think of these arcs as uh, uh, causality uh, uh, arcs. But that's not necessary. That's actually not necessary. In, the, in, the, in BaseNet, arcs don't always encode causality. And let me show you an example. Given this example, we made the arc from R to T because we think that R causes T, right? So we have P of R and P of T given R. Now from these two, we can, of course, compute the full joint distribution. P of T given, P of T and R. So if you look at these values, you can get every entry here the way that we did it in the previous slide. Okay, so that's the joint distribution table. That's the model. Okay, now the question is, what if we reverse the arc here? Can we still model or can we still have the same joint distribution table? In other words, if we do it that way, if we make the arc from T to R, of course that now doesn't mean traffic causes rain. Of course, we know that traffic doesn't cause rain, of course, right? But can we in the base net have something like this and still get the same joint distribution? First, when we do it that way, we will have two different tables, right? And in the previous slide, we had P of T, a P of R, because we had this, right? We had R causes T, right? So we had P of R and we had P of T given R. Now, because T points to R, so T is the parent of R and T is independent. Then um, we have P of T, that's the prior distribution of T, and P of R given T. Now, if you look at these numbers, of course, this is, these numbers are different from the table, from these tables. But if you started to compute the joint distribution table, you will get the same exact table that we saw in the previous slide. What does that mean? It means that this table, which is the actual model, the joint distribution, can be encoded in two different ways. Equivalently, it can be encoded this way, which is more intuitive, which means that R causes T, and also that way, which is less, much less intuitive, of course, because T doesn't cause R, but still, mathematically, it is okay because it produced the same joint distribution table. That means that these arcs don't necessarily mean causality. In this case, yes, it indicates causality, but in this case, of course, we know that the traffic doesn't cause rain. However, we manage it to have the same model. 
So that means that it doesn't matter actually the direction of the arc here. What matters is that we say that there is some relationship between these two variables, some correlation between these two variables. If we manage it to, to make it logical to be a causal, that's fine. That will be easier for us. That's, that will be simpler to think about. But still, mathematically, both will be fine. You can do both. Of course, usually we do it in the causal direction. Okay? But you can do either way. You can do it either way. So, in conclusion, BaseNet reflect the, the true causal patterns. Yes, sometimes. Okay? When that happens, it's often simpler. It's easier to think about. But it's not necessarily the links in the in base net not necessarily causal. They are not always causal. Sometimes, actually, there is no causal effect between two variables. However, we put a link between them to indicate that they, co they are correlated, they are related. There is a direct relation. But that relation doesn't have to be causality. Type. If that's the case, that means that these links don't actually mean causality, right? We just mentioned that. What does they mean then? What do they mean then? They actually mean conditional independence. They encode conditional independence. They encode this equation, which is probability of a variable given all the other variables is equal to probability of that variable given only the parents of that variable, which means that xi is independent of all the other variables that are not uh, uh, its parents. Okay, that's what is guaranteed in BaseNet. What is not guaranteed is the causality. It might encode causality, it might not. It might mean causality, it might not. Okay, so the direction doesn't actually matter. Because as you saw, if we reverse the direction, still we can model the same joint distribution table. Of course, the, the, uh, the details will be different. You see, the CPTs are different now. But with these CPTs, they are uh, uh, producing the same joint distribution table, which is the actual model that we want to get. Okay? Questions? Any questions? Is that clear? Is that not clear? Is anyone with me here? Or I'm talking to myself? Okay, good. Okay, then now we'll switch to um, the inference part, which is the main topic of today. So let me... Uh, share the new slides okay so um, today inshallah and next lecture we will focus on inference inference in basenet given basenet now i want to do inference first what do we mean by inference we we heard about this word before inference means Calculating some useful quantity, of course, here we uh, we mean probability in the uh, in the context of base net from a joint probability distribution. Calculating some useful probability from a joint probability distribution. Now, let me ask you: Do we have in in a, given a base net? Do we actually have the joint probability distribution? Any inference here means given or having joint probability distribution, let's calculate some useful uh, probability. Type. That assumes that we have the joint probability distribution. Is it actually the case that in BaseNet we have the joint probability distribution? What do you think? Hmm? 
what did we do earlier today? We said that when we are given a base net, we can compute any joint probability, right? Right? So that means that we can compute all the entries in the joint probability distribution table, which means that we can get the joint, joint probability distribution. We don't construct it in the first place from scratch. I mean, from the, from the beginning, because it's giant, generally. It is huge. And that's the main idea of BaseNet. It encodes this joint probability distribution in much smaller local tables, local uh, conditional probability tables. But from these tables, we know very well how we can compute any joint probability, which means we can compute the entire joint probability distribution table. Okay? Is that clear? Any question about this? So explicitly, we don't have the table. But implicitly, we have it because we can compute any entry in that table from the tables that we have. The main idea is that the tables that we have are much smaller than the big table. So we need to do some computations to compute any entry uh, in the table from these small tables. Any question about that? Is that clear? Okay, so examples of useful probabilities that we want to compute. The posterior probability, I think we saw that uh, before, we have a query variable or more, and we have some evidence variables. So we call this posterior because that's the probability of a variable given some evidence. Sometimes also we want to get the most likely explanation, most likely value of the query variable given some evidence. So this is very related to this. Um, but we will not focus on, on, on that in this, uh, in this course. We will focus on the posterior probability. But if you want to get this, of course, you can get this uh, uh, probability uh, distribution and maximize, maximize it. And you get the maximum, uh, get the value of the maximum uh, uh, probability in that distribution to get this one. Okay? Right. Now, we heard about inference before. That's not the first time to hear about it, even in this session. Of course, we did it in other sessions, but in this session, we also we already uh, have heard about it when we talked about what we call inference by enumeration. So just to, to uh, refresh your mind, the general case is that we have some evidence variables. We have some query variables, it can be one, it can be more. We have also the other variables that are not evidence nor query. We call them hidden variables. And we want to compute probability of Q given the evidence, probability of the query given the evidence. Now, if you remember, we, we have discussed that through three steps. We do that. We do inference by enumeration through three steps. The first one is to select the entries that are consistent with the evidence from the uh, joint table. Here we assume that we have the joint table, by the way. And inference by enumeration, if you remember, we assume that we have the full joint distribution table. And now from that table, we want to do the inference. This case is not exactly in the um, uh, in base net, right? Because we don't have explicitly the table. We can compute it, but we don't have it explicitly. We have to do some computations to get the entries that we want. But this is ju just a, a, a reminder of what we discussed earlier. Given the table, given the full table, we select the entries that are consistent with the evidence. Then we sum out the uh, uh, hidden variables. We marginalize the hidden variables. Okay, so this is uh, the whole. Uh, this is the whole thing. Okay, after we select the entries with the uh, with the evidence. We have Q and we have all the hidden variables. Now I want to get rid of these variables. How can I do that? I do that by summing over their values. If I do that, then I have this probability, Q and the evidence only. What remains is to normalize. Because what we have now is the probability of the evidence, because we selected all the uh, all the entries that match the evidence. So the total of them is the evidence. When we divide by that, this is the conditional probability that we want, which is P of Q given the evidence. 
So we went through these steps before. I think we, we took a couple of examples also on that. So given the full joint distribution table, we can do these uh, uh, three steps to get any uh, probability that we want. Select the evidence, marginalize the hidden variables, normalize. Then we get the probability that we want. Right. If that's the case, why is that uh, a problem? Okay. Um, why don't we do that? Why do we need to do uh, BaseNet and, uh, and uh, the other method that we will uh, talk about today and next time? Because this is expensive, of course, right? Because we have, we assume that we have the table, the, the, the full table. And having the full table, of course, is expensive. Now, let's, uh, um, um, let's see how we can do inference by enumeration in the context of a base net. Here, we didn't assume that we have any base net. We have just the full table. We didn't say how we got it. Okay? We assume that we have it. Here, we have just the base net. The base not, uh, net, of course, can produce the joint table, but we don't have the joint table explicitly. We just have the base net, which means that we have this graphical model and we have for each node the uh, conditional probability table. Now, assume that we don't we have we don't have any limitation in time, we have lim unlimited time. What can we do to do inference? Let's go through an example. Let's say that I want from this burglary uh, network, I want to compute this probability. Probability of B given plus j and plus m. Now this is the conditional probability. You know that this is equal to the joint probability of the three of them, b plus j and plus m, divided by the probability of the evidence, which is plus j and plus m. Right? So that's, um, uh, that's the conditional probability uh, uh, equation. That's how conditional probability is computed. Okay, so I can say that, if I erase this, I can say that this is proportional to the joint probability of these three. If I compute this, then I would just divide by the probability of the evidence, which is the, uh, which is the uh, normalization step that I will do uh, later, uh, at the end. So what I need to do actually is this probability. Now, if I have something like this, what I can do to compute it is to get the full joint probability and then marginalize the hidden variables. Okay, so I will get the entire full joint distribution. So I will join all the hidden variables to get the uh, full table. Then I will mar marginalize over the hidden variables, which is E and A. If I do that, then I will get rid of E and A, and I get the probability that I want. Okay, so so that's that's the exact that's that's not using the fact that we have base net yet. Uh, this is a general uh, general probability uh, calculations. If I have probability generally, if I have three variables, x, y, and z. And I told you I want to get probability of x. That means that I can get it from marginalizing the full joint probability over the hidden variables here, which is which are y and z. Okay, that's general. We didn't use any conditional independence or any uh, concept of of base net. Now that we have this probability, that that we have this joint probability. I can use base net now. What is this joint probability? We know how we can compute any joint probability using base net. This is this is the expansion that we we did earlier today. Right? Each variable conditioned by its parents. Where are these values? These are values in the CPT CPTs of each node. So we can compute that, right? But remember, we have to compute that with the sum over all possible values of E and A. So we have to expand it to every possible combination of E and A. E has two values, A has two values, so we have four factors here. 
this is one, this is second, third, and fourth. And we add them all together. This is just to get rid of E and A. Okay, and thus compute this probability. Now, after we do that, we'll have just to normalize and get the conditional probability that we need. That's if we want to do inference by enumeration in base net. So the only difference is that we have to, um, uh, we, we, need, we, we can use this uh, instead of the chain rule, we use this conditional uh, probabilities using the, uh, the, uh, the concept that, uh, that we, uh, of course, uh, uh, discussed earlier, which is conditional independence that the variable is uh, conditionally independent of any other variable except uh, given uh, its parents. Okay? Fine. What is the problem with that? We can still use inference by enumeration in base net. At least we didn't have to construct the entire table. We just had to get these four entries in the table. Right? We didn't have the we didn't have to have the full table. These are actually four entries uh, from some of these tables. Why do we still need to uh, to to uh, to maybe use another another method? The answer is that this is very small network, two hidden variables. Here we have a bigger network, so many more variables and even that is a very small compared to base nets that are used in reality that has thousands sometimes millions of variables so that will not be scalable and will be very expensive to do so today inshallah we'll see the beginning of a method that is more efficient than inference by enumeration so again why is inference by enumeration so slow because we have to join everything, join the whole joint distribution, then sum out the hidden variables. So that's the general idea here. Join, join, join with hidden variables as we did here, remember? Here, we add, we joined E and A here, right? So we added A and E here, E and A here, and then we marginalized them out. We summed them out. We get rid of them. We eliminated them. And remember the word eliminate later, inshallah, maybe today or next lecture. Okay? So we add them to get the joint, uh, or at least part of the joint distribution, and then we shrink the distribution by eliminating them. That's the main idea of uh, inference by enumeration. Why, why is that a problem? Because when we add, when we join everything, the distribution will be huge. That will be big. And then we shrink them. Yes, eventually we'll shrink to we'll get what we want. But to get what we want, we started with, or we had an intermediate step in which we have a very large table. So the main idea of the other method that is more efficient, which is called variable elimination, is to interleave both. Interleave joining and marginalization. Joining and, and shrinking. So here we did one join here. In, 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 in inference by enumeration, we do one join, one huge, big join, and then shrink everything. Here we will interleave these two. We will join one variable and then marginalize it, get rid of it. Then join another variable, then marginalize it. Then join a third variable, then marginalize it. So at any point in time, we will never have, or we should not have, a huge table as an intermediate step. So we keep the local uh, table that, that the processing table that we are working with or the tables or what we call factors as small as possible. We don't get to have the huge table and then shrink it. We have smaller tables. We don't really join much before we shrink. Okay, so that's the main idea. Of course, we'll see the details today and the next time. But that's the main idea of variable em elimination. Instead of do huge giant and then huge shrink, we'll do step by step. We'll interleave join with marginalization. So this is called 
variable elimination because we eliminate one variable at a time. Still, it is NP hard to do it in the optimal way, but in practice, it is much in practice it is much faster than inference by enumeration because we will keep the size of the, the tables or the factors that we are working with much smaller than inference by enumeration. Any question about the idea before we get into the details? Any questions? Okay, so let's uh, let's move on. So to move on and, and talk about how we can do variable elimination, we'll have to introduce new notation called factors. Okay, so we'll start with what we call factor zoo because we'll have different uh, factor speeches here. Um, and then we'll see how we can use these factors in doing uh, inference by enumeration and also variable elimination. So what are the elements of the factor zoo? We call factor, but we actually mean a table. Okay, so a factor, when we say factor, it is a table. Okay, it is probability table. You can think of it that way. So the first type of a factor is a normal joint distribution uh, probability table. Okay, so we saw that before, a joint distribution between two variables, x and y. In that joint distribution, we'll have an entry for every value of x and y. So for example, if I have the temperature and weather, I have two values for temperature, hot and cold, two values for the weather, sun and rain. So overall, we'll have four entries, two times two, and there is a probability for each, of course. The sum of such table, because it's a full joint distribution, will be one. Okay, so that's the first type of factors. The second type, what we call selected joint, and don't worry much about the names here. We don't care about the names, but just they are just trying to describe the table. But these are different factors. It doesn't matter much the, the names. But the names, of course, are indicative. Here, selected joint, which means that we had a joint distribution, but then we selected from that some entries that match this fixed value. So notice here something that here we have two capital letters. We have two capital letters here, which means that both of these variables change. We have values of both of these values, variables. Here we have one capital, one small. When we have, when, whenever we have a small value like that, a small uh, letter like that, that means that we have a fixed value. So that's not a full joint distribution. It is joint, but selected based on X. So for example, this is a probability of cold, which is a specific value of the temperature and weather. Okay, so here we had four entries because T changes and W changes. Here we have two entries only because W only changes. T doesn't change. T is always cold. Okay, so we have just two entries here. Now, since we have only two entries and we have just one value for the variable t here, then the sum will not be one. The sum will not be one. Then what will be the sum? The sum will be the probability of x, the probability of this selected value. Okay? Because here we have one value, here we have all possible values of w, so that's the probability of that event. If you remember, the event cold, that's the probability of cold. Okay? So the sum of the entries in that factor, in that type of factors, will be the probability of the uh, uh, of the fixed value here. So the entries will be all possible values of y and fixed value of x. Any question about these two factors? Questions? Let's move on. Uh, this is one uh, very important point. If we look at this factor, we use two capital letters here, right? Capital letters means we have all values of such variable. So we call this factor 
to have two dimensions because we have two changing variables here. So this table has two dimensions because we have x and y. This table is only one dimension because there is only one variable that changes here and the other is fixed. So this table is of one dimension only. This table, this table is, or this factor is of two dimensions. Okay, so this notion is very important. So the number of capital letters is the dimensionality of the table. Okay, and, and, and that will hold for all types of factors. We'll have five of them. So we saw two already. The third one is what we call single conditional. Single conditional. So here we have probability of Y capital given X small. So that means that the condition is fixed. Okay, and the query is changing. So for each value of, of y, we will have one entry with a fixed value of x, condition on the fixed value of x. So if x here is the temperature and it is cold, that means that all entries here will have the value cold, and then the other variable, which is w here, will have all possible values, which are sun and rain. Okay, so that's a conditional distribution table. Because given the fact that we have cold, we have all possible values of W. So that's a conditional distribution table, which means that the sum will be 1. Okay? Questions? Mahmoud, can you pick up the mic, please? Mahmoud? Okay. Uh, what is the meaning of sums to one? Okay. Uh, when when a table, in this case, when it sums to one, that means that it is a probability distribution, right? Probability distribution means that it, the all entries will sum to one. So that type of factors is a probability distribution. It is a distribution of T given the condition called here in that. Uh, sorry, the uh, it's not T because W is the change. So it's the distribution of W given T equals cold. Okay? So that's what it means. The fourth one, the fourth one, fourth factor, is a family of conditionals. Family of conditionals. You look, look at this, this factor. This is probability of Y given a specific value of X. Now, if I have this table, but with different values of X, one per value of X, and here x was cold, t was cold. Here we have one when t is cold, uh, t is hot, and one when t is cold. So this one is probability of w given hot, and this one is probability of w given cold. So this is a family of probability of conditional distributions. We call it family of conditionals. So it's like repeating that table, but with different values of the condition. So we have one for cold, we have one for hot. Okay, and this is the kind of tables that we see in BaseNet. Under each table, it is there is a conditional distribution table, right? CPT is a, actually a family of conditionals. One pair combination of the parents, the values of the parents. Here the parent is just one, which is T here. Okay, so T has two values, hot and cold. So I will have a distribution when T is hot and another distribution when T is cold. Now, what will be the sum of the entries? Well, every um, small table here is a distribution, right? So the sum of one, every one table is one. Time. How many small tables we have within this family? That's the number of values of the condition, conditional uh, variable, right? So the number of values, values of T will be the number of tables here. Since each table will sum to 1, then the sum of the entries here will be the number of values of T. Or generally, if we, if we say P of Y given X, it will be sum to the number of values of X. So that would be more than 1, of course. Actually, every... Small table here, sum to 1. So this one sum to 1, this one sum to 1. K, 
okay, we have a number of them, which is equal to the number of values of the conditional variable. Because we have a table, we have a distribution for each of these values. Okay? So that's the fourth factor. So going back quickly, the first one was the joint distribution. The second one was selected joint from the joint distribution. The third one was a conditional distribution. And the fourth one was the family of conditionals. The last one is specified family. So look at this, uh, this table, this factor. This is family of conditions, right? Now, what if I told you, I want only from that table, the entries where W is sum. So I will take this entry and that entry. Now, this is table that indicates probability of sum given T. Right? Probability of Y small given X capital. So in that table, we will have entry for every value of X, but with fixed Y. Now, what will that sum to? We, never, we, we don't know, actually. Actually, as, as I told, as I show you in the previous slide, each entry of that table comes from a specific, from a different distribution. Right? So that's rain given hot. So that comes from this probability comes from P of T, uh, P of W given, um, given hot. And that one comes from P of W given cold. So we, we, we never know what will, will uh, this sum to. Actually, it might be less than one, it might be more than one. Actually, in the previous slide, I think the ones that I, uh, that I selected, 0 0.8 and 0 0.4, that would sum more than one. So we cannot say anything about what this factor uh, will sum to. But it is specified family, okay? From the conditional, uh, from the family of conditionals, we select some of the entries that match a specific value of the query. This is still, it's not a distribution because it doesn't sum to one, okay? But it's still, it's a factor. That's why I told you in the beginning, factor means a table. Table for, that relates some variables, <coughs> sorry, tables, a table that relates some variable together. Some variables will change, will have all possible values of them, and some, uh, some other will have fixed values. Okay. Now, a summary of all of that, I can have a factor for uh, a probability like that, y1 to yn given x1 to xm. This is a multidimensional array. It's a factor. Its values depend on the values of the variables, of course. Now, if I made any of these uh, uh, variables, small letter, that means that the value of that variable is fixed, which means that this dimension is missing, is, is removed from the number of variables. What does that mean? Let me give you an example. If I have a factor that has something like this, uh, A capital uh, plus B um, minus E given C capital, and e capital now what are what is the what are the dimensions of that factor that factor has five variables right but not all of them changing only a c and e change which means that this factor is a three dimensional factor because we have three changing variables here these variables are fixed b is equal to plus b and uh, sorry that's e again sorry that uh, a b c d that should be d sorry okay so that's a c and d are changing b and e are fixed b fix it to plus b and e fix it to minus e. so that's a three-dimensional uh, factor if i have something like this
So how many dimensions in that factor? How many dimensions? Uh, Yusuf? Yes, B and D. E. Yeah. Can you tell me how many enters we have we will have in this factor in this table? How many rows we will have? You can't. Why? Because you don't know how many values for B and E, right? If if I talk, yeah. How? Let me uh, let me assume that they are binary variables. So they have each has two values. Why is it eight? We said that B and D only changing, right? A, C, and D are fixed. So the number of entries will be the number of values of B, which is two, times the number of values of E, which is two, times the number of values of A and C and D, which are all ones because they are fixed, right? So we will have just four entries in that factor. Type, what if, what if we have three values for B and three values for E? How many entries we will have, uh, Yusuf? Hmm. Nine, right? Yes, nine. It's three times three. Yeah, right? So it will be three, uh, three times three times one times one times one, of course, which will be nine. Okay, so that's, that's this factor is two dimensional factor. Okay, uh, regardless of the number of values, by the way, the dimensions indicate the number of variables, the number of Changing variables, yes. Okay, and this one is three dimensions because we have three changing variables. Two others are just fixed. So if 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 we want to look at this um, this table, this table will have um, a column for each variable. So we'll have a, b, c, d, e, and then of course the probability. But for a, for a and c and D, sorry, for A and C and D, they will have fixed values. So we have plus A, plus, uh, sorry, uh, plus C minus D, plus A plus C minus D, all over, okay? What will change only is B and D. So B will have, if it's binary, to have plus B plus E plus B minus E minus B plus E, minus b minus e so these are the the columns that will change but the other columns will have will be the same will be fixed that's why you will have only four entries if we have just two values for b and e any question about that time if no questions, then I think we'll have to stop here. Uh, we ran out of time. But inshallah, next time, given that now we understand what we mean by factors, I hope, how can we use such notion to do inference? First, we'll go through inference by enumeration to see what will be the problem with that. And then we'll go through variable elimination, which will be a more efficient way of doing inference in base nets. Any questions before we stop? Okay, then talk to you, inshallah, on Tuesday. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.